Let's start. Today we will see, how to get the precise and approximate user location in Java Android, version 12. Let's see the project structure. In the manifest file, write these location permissions. Now an important point to be noted is that, if you want to fetch the approximate user location, you can use the course location permission. But, if you want to fetch the precise user location, then you need to use both course and fine location permissions. Then set the exported attribute to true in the activity tag. This is mandatory in Android version 12. Now, in the app level build.gradle file, set the compile SDK version and target SDK version to 32. Then, integrate these dependencies. In the project structure, we have the main activity, a location manager class, and a permissions manager class. And in the UI, we have the activity underscore main.xml file, which is the layout of the main activity. Let's see the UI. Here we have three buttons. Get approximate location, get precise location, and get a precise and approximate location. Now, a very important point. When we ask for the approximate location permission, we see such a permission dialog box. Once the approximate location permission is granted, if the app needs to use the precise user location, we can ask for the precise location permission by clicking this button. When we ask for the precise location, we see such a dialog box. And when we ask for both approximate and precise permissions together, we see such a dialog box, where the user can select either approximate or precise location. Here also, if the user chooses the approximate location initially, and then afterward if we require to use the precise location, we can ask the precise location permission later by clicking this button. Let's see the Java code now. These are the imports. This is the permissions manager class. First, we have implemented the singleton object creation pattern, so that only a single instance of this class would be present throughout the app life cycle. Now, as you can see, here, we have two check permissions functions. Why do we need two functions? That is because, in the check permission function, we check if all the permissions that have been passed on in this function have been granted or not. So we use this function when we have to ask for either precise or approximate location permissions separately. But, in the check precise and approximate location permissions function, we check if either precise or approximate permission is granted or not. Here, we don't need both the permissions to be granted. Granting any of the two permissions will work. So this function is specifically designed to ask the precise and approximate location permissions only. While the check permissions function can be used generically for all other permissions like camera permission, storage permission, etc. This is the check permissions function. This function can be used to check if either the approximate or the precise permission is granted or not. Also, this function can be used for all other kinds of permissions too, like, camera permission, storage permission, etc. So this is a generic check permissions function. And this is the check precise and approximate permissions function. Here we check if any of the two permissions are granted by the user or not. So for these two buttons, we will use the check permissions function. And for this button, we will use the check approximate and precise location permission function. This is the ask permission function. Here we handle the result of approximate location permission. Here we handle the result of precise location permission. Here we handle the result of approximate and precise location permissions when asked together. These are the imports. This is the location manager class. These are the data members. First, we implement the singleton object creation pattern, so that only a single instance of this class would be present throughout the app life cycle. Meanwhile, we call the init function, where we initialize some things. In the init function, we get the location provider. Then we set up a location callback where we can get the location data. We haven't used this callback in this tutorial. And finally, we call the create location request function. This function asks the user to enable to location service on the Android device. This is the create location service function. This is the get last location function. This function gives us the latest location data. These are the start location updates and stop location updates functions. 
These functions are called from the on resume and on stop functions of the main activity. These functions start receiving and stop receiving the location data. This is the is location enabled function. This function checks if the location service is enabled on the Android device or not. These are the imports. This is the main activity. These are the data members. Here we have three sets of location permissions. Course location will be used to find the approximate location. Find location will be used to find the precise location, but the condition is that the approximate location permission should have been granted earlier. Then only we can ask for the precise location separately. And then we have a combination of course and find location permissions. In the onCreate function, first, we get the instances of the permissions manager class and location manager class. When the get approximate location button is clicked, first, we check if the approximate location permission is granted or not. If not, we ask for that permission. If the permission is already granted, we call the get location function. When the get precise location button is clicked, first, we check if the precise location permission is granted or not. If not, we ask for that permission. If the permission is already granted, we call the get location function. When the get approximate and precise location button is clicked, first, we check if either the approximate or precise location permission is granted or not. If not, we ask for that permission. If the permissions are already granted, we call the get location function. This is the get location function. Here, first, we check if the location service is enabled on the Android device or not. If not, we call the create location request function and ask the user to enable the location service on the device. If the location service is already enabled, we get the user location and show it in the toast. In the on resume and on stop functions, we call the start and stop location updates functions. In the on request permissions result function, we check the result of the permission. Let's run the app. First, we will get the approximate location. Now we will get the precise location. Now I will uninstall the app again, so that I can freshly ask for the location permissions. Now, we will click the Get Approximate and Precise Location button. And first, I will select the precise location. Now I will uninstall the app again, so that I can freshly ask for the location permissions. Now, we will click the Get Approximate and Precise Location button. And first, I will select the approximate location. Now I will select the precise location. So that's it. That's how you can get the precise and approximate locations in Java Android version 12. Thank you.